In this video, I want to discuss the international Fisher effect. Now, you may be familiar with the Fisher effect, which is attributed to the famed economist Irving Fisher, which suggests that nominal interest rates contain two components, the expected inflation rate and the real interest rate. And you should recall that the real interest rate or the real rate of interest represents the return on the investment to savers after accounting for expected inflation. And the formula is the nominal rate equals one plus the real rate times one plus expected inflation. And a lot of times we approximate this by the real rate plus expected inflation. Now, I've done a video on the Fisher effect where I show why you can use this approximation and why it's a good approximation, and I'll post a link below this video. Now, in order to get to the international Fisher effect, we need to discuss briefly um, the concept of purchasing power parity. Um, I also have a video on purchasing power parity, and I will post a link below this video as well. There are two versions of purchasing power parity. Um, absolute purchasing power parity says that the prices of baskets of goods in two different countries should be the same. Relative purchasing power parity says the rate of change in prices should be similar when measured in the common currency. So the equation for relative purchasing power parity is that the expected change in the exchange rate, E of F, equals 1 plus the inflation rate in the home country divided by 1 plus the inflation rate in the foreign country minus 1. So just to sort of recap a little bit, the Fisher effect shows that for a given real rate, the higher the expected inflation rate, the higher the nominal rate. Purchasing power parity tells us that exchange exchange rates will change based on differentials in inflation rates in two countries. So putting these two together, we get the international um, Fisher effect. And this basically says that countries with higher nominal rates have higher inflation rates due to the Fisher effect. So using relative purchasing power parity, where the ch uh, change in the exchange rate should be related to the differences in inflation rates of two countries, we get the change in the exchange rate should be related to differences in the nominal rates of the two countries. So the equation for this is the expected change in the exchange rate is 1 plus the interest rate in the home country divided by 1 plus the interest rate in the foreign country or it can be approximated by um, the interest rate in the home country minus the interest rate in the foreign country. So this looks exactly like um, relative purchasing power parity. We've just substituted the nominal interest rate for the inflation rates. All right, let's take a look at an example. Suppose the interest rate on a one-year insured U.S. bank deposit is 9% and the rate on a one-year insured British bank deposit is 10%. And the reason we say insured is you want to make sure that they have the same level of risk, so essentially risk-free in this case. What does the international Fisher effect predict will happen to the exchange rate? Well, 1 plus 0 0.09, that's the rate in the U.S. Okay, we'll use that as the home country, and one, divided by 1 plus 0.10, which is the rate in the uh, British bank, minus 1 gives us minus 0.00909 or 0.909%, which is a little bit less than 1%. Remember our approximation? We could have taken 9% minus 1%. It would have given us negative 1%. So you can see it's a reasonably good approximation. And this is uh, what we expect. So we've basically just used the nominal rates as a proxy for the inflation rates. What are some of the implications? The international Fisher effect theory suggests that currencies with high interest rates will have high expected inflation 
due to the Fisher effect, and the relatively high inflation will cause the currencies to depreciate due to the purchasing power parity effect. Implications of the international Fisher effect for foreign investors, um, similar type implications. Um, foreign investors who attempt to capitalize on relatively high U.S. interest rates are going to lose out because these high rates will be due to high inflation and they're going to see a change in the exchange rate. Graphically, just to close this argument, you can see that we draw a line here for the international Fisher effect. Down here on the x-axis, we have the percentage change in the foreign currency spot rate. Up here on the y-axis, we have the um, difference in the two interest rates. And for the international Fisher effect to hold, points should lie on this on this line, which should be a 45 degree line. So if you're down here, then the international Fisher effect doesn't hold. If you're over here, the international Fisher effect um, doesn't hold. But just to sum up, you know, the international Fisher effect basically just puts the Fisher effect together with relative purchasing power parity to say that instead of looking at the differential in in inflation rates, we just look at the differential in nominal rates to determine what we think will happen to exchange rates.